there's this whole thing where people think, oh, I'm ignoring my dog. I'm a, I'm a mean mum or our dogs are only in us and our lives are a part of it, but we're their yes. whole life. So therefore we have to play with them 24 seven. No, no, no. Because then you create an over anxious dog that needs you all the time. And if you're not around them, then it creates a whole load of stress for them. Welcome to the new episode of She Gets Sit Done. Make sure to hit subscribe, comment or like. We hope you love this week's episode. Enjoy! Hey guys, welcome to the next episode of She Gets Sit Done. Today we are discussing attention seeking. Is your dog an attention seeker or not? Or is your dog unable to just chill and leave you alone? That's kind of what we want to talk about. Let us know in the comments what type of dog you have. Is your dog a bit of an attention seeker? All right, let's dive into it. My lab would be if I let her. She would be constantly at my feet the whole time. Mm -hmm. She's also one that struggles to relax. She would just follow me around everywhere and want to be everything that no everything that I'm doing all the time. Right. So I've had to kind of be like, you need to go and relax by yourself for a little bit. Mm -hmm. And she's pretty good at that, but she definitely wants to know what you're doing all the time. Yeah. Yeah, be right in it. Zella could be. I feel like a lot of dogs are because we train them to be. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> which I think instantly segues into the, the problem people are having right now, especially the people that have dogs that keep bringing a ball or they keep nudging them for pets, you know? You know, my big one is when they just whinge because you're ignoring them. Right. Like if I, if I do a training session with a client and they just sat there whinging, mm. I'm just ignore them. They're fine. And the owner's like, oh, you're okay. Yeah. You're fine. I'm like, well, they just whinged and you just responded. So that's what they wanted. So they're going to keep doing that. That's it. I think a lot of attention-seeking behavior of people don't know that they trained their dog to be that way. Yeah. And if you stop doing that, the problem will, will go away. Yeah. So um, what I, I, t I tend to teach people is an on and off button for your dog. I think that's a really good place to start where you just, every time you want to do something with your dog, like maybe playing or walking or training or whatever it is that I always start my dogs with, are you ready? And I say it really excitedly, are you ready? And they're like, oh yeah, shit's about to happen now. And then when I'm done, I say finished or all done. And I toss some treats on the ground. And they know it's done. And then I pick up the treat, uh, pick up the, the ball if I was using one, and I put that away so they can't go and bring it back to me. Yep. And then done is done. Like, Zelda will sometimes keep barking at me, like, oh, let's do another trick. But done means done. Leave me alone. Go do something for yourself. Yep. And I feel like a lot of people go wrong there because they do pick up that ball and they toss it again. Yeah. Or they do... You know, oh, I hate when Zala does this. She's a massive nudger and she'll walk over and she just nudges me for pets. Yeah. Oh, that triggers me so much. Yeah. And if I do it, right, and then I stop, she'll just nudge, nudge me again. Like, hey, keep going. And that's your dog training you to be the little bitch. Yeah. <laughs> so Nova, I'll be patting her. She'll nudge me more while I'm actually patting her. <clears throat> and she's like, touch me more. I'm like, I can't physically touch you any more than I already am. And then she'll be like, no, you need to touch me again. And I'm like, right, that's it. I'm done. Yeah. Done with this interaction. I'm patting you. Exactly. And then she's like, oh. But also, like, I don't want a needy dog. If you have such a needy dog, you can start borderline, like, bordering on the end of separation issues. True. People think that, like, there's this whole thing where people think, oh, I'm ignoring my dog, I'm a, I'm a mean mum, or, you know, like, my dog wanted to play ball and I ignored them, like, you know, like, like the whole thing, like, you know, um, our dogs are only in us and our lives are a part of it, but we're their yes. whole life, so therefore we have to play with them 24-7. No, no, no. Teach your dog to chill because and not need you all the time because then you create an over anxious dog that needs you all the time and if you're not around them then you can't then it creates a whole load of stress for them. Yeah, I think what you just said the the whole our dogs are only in our lives for a limited time but we are their whole life. That's really one that I understand that's very emotional to people, but that really opens the door to your dog just taking the piss when it comes to attention seeking. Yeah. 
like that like I get it but that's playing on so much of your emotion like oh I can't say no because my dog is only limited and I they deserve whatever they, you know like it just opens Pandora's box man yeah but again that social media again it is yeah which in those feelings on you that are kind of unreasonable like your dog can live a really really amazing life with you even if you say not now yeah right and that's it should be allowed to to be able to say to your dog no i'm busy right now without you thinking but my dog has only got limited time on the world but it's like fuck that man <laughs> not now not now <laughs> yeah that's it yeah they have no concept of their their time or anything they don't go oh in about five years, I'm going to be dead. I better, I better have that ball. Yeah, you get to live an extra sixty years than me. Like, let's, you know, throw let's play ball. ball. Throw the ball. Come on, because in five years, and like, you know, I know that's quite a out out the yeah. gate statement, but it is like dogs don't think like that. That's it. They they really don't. And I would rather have a dog that I put restrictions on, and they're not so stressed about being around me all the time mm, as sure. well. Like, I would rather my dog wasn't anxious all the time, like, waiting for me when I came home. Absolutely. I'd rather my dog be a bit more independent and would be fine by themselves. Agreed. And it's just, you create such a hyper dog if you do that. We're going back to the whole, if you enrich constantly, if you always give in to the whims of your dog, it ruins the relationship you have with your dog. Yes, your dog loves you. But do they love you respectfully or is it just like, oh, this sucker gives in to whatever I want all the time. But when I really need someone, I can't rely on them. Yeah. Right. Because I feel like I see that a lot when I go to clients' houses where they where the dog did get all the freedom and all the love, so much love. But then the moment I come in, the dog is like, I'm going to listen to this person instead. Right. Because... The owner is cool because I, I get everything from them when I want to, but I'm not that interested when they want something from me, right? You get that. It's not so valuable. Exactly. And then you go back to high school and you just need to play a bit of hard to get with your dog. Like if I send a hundred texts to someone I potentially like, after like they're going to be put off. Yeah, they're like, you're, you're too intense. That's like... too much. But... If you play a bit of hard to get, you do a bit of flirty messages and then you go quiet for a bit. You create interest, right? That's the whole freaking concept of dating. Yeah. Everyone's like, oh, you got to play hard to get. And we need to do the same with the dog. And if you always give in because your dog wants something, they're just not, you're just going to be the pushover, really. Yeah. So. Yeah, play hard to get. Play hard to get with your dog. You don't always need to be available. You don't always need to jump up the moment they want something. Like, it doesn't matter so much. Like, ever, like, I hate it when people say, hate is a strong word, but, oh, but my dog doesn't like this. I'm like, I don't care that your dog doesn't like it. I don't like things either. I don't like cleaning the house. I still have to do it. Yeah. You know, there are some things that your dog just has to put up with. Yeah. I don't like having to throw the ball when I'm in the middle of a Zoom meeting. So fuck your ball. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We'll play with that later when I have time. Exactly. Just, there's your heart to get. Not now. Try again when it's more suitable to me. And I think another thing is, relating back to kids again, if your kid was just like, I want to play right now, oh, I'm yeah. sure there's points in a parent's life they're like, not right now, I need to do this. Yeah. You're not neglecting your child. It's not like you're not making time to spend quality time with them. Parents don't then think that, oh my God, I said no to my kid like I'm being mean. They're just like, not right now. Mm. And parents are okay doing that. But then say no to your dog. It's like, oh my God. It's like, oh my God, I can't say no to my dog. Like, why? Yeah. And that's, again, if they learn how to be bored, they're fine. Like, my, for example, my dogs, I woke them in the morning and then from... I don't know, 10 to 4, I basically do nothing with them. Yeah. They sleep in the sun and they move from sunspot to sunspot. And then it's lunchtime and I get a little bit of attention during lunchtime. And then around 4 o'clock, Lennox will get a bit antsy. And that's when I do a bit of training or we go for another walk and then 5 o'clock is dinner time. But you had like a whole middle of the exactly. day where they were doing nothing. That's it. And they relaxed. 
And they were fine with it. They didn't need it. They are, because I've trained them an awful yeah. lot. Yeah. And I've got a Staffy and a Kelpie, which is usually people say, oh, these dogs can't relax. I'm like, yeah, they can. You just got to put work. You have to train a dog how to chill yeah. and how to be ignored. Don't need to be available all the time. Yeah. My partner works from home. My do- Our dog that stays home with him, Hey, she has to chill mm. all the time like during the work hours i'll get home and we'll do stuff or you know even me like i might have had like a full-on busy day That's it. it'll be like well we we'll go out for a walk later and then we get to do a lot of fun stuff and then we'll cuddle on the couch and we'll do stuff together but during this middle bit i just need to not do, do any I, I need to not do anything otherwise exactly. i'm not going to have energy to give you what you need later as well that's it so i think one thing that could help if you have a dog that keeps bringing you toys, for example, it's like, put your toys away. Yeah. Just put them in a basket on a shelf that your dog can't reach and only take it out when you want to play with it. And I think that's another thing. People think dogs have to have toy, unlimited toy access or mm. otherwise. They're bored. It, yeah. So like my dog has two toys around the house that she so. likes to chew, but they're not play interacting with Mm. with me and her those are her own entertainment that she goes off and that's fine i'm happy to give those to her but if it's like interactive toys like tug toys and stuff they go away they, they don't stay out yeah. i do have them out and i do have lennox annoying us with us yeah you know like do she say no as i do but um i do have lennox sometimes pick one up or like he gets his ball from the tub mm. and he's like now you know, like play, throw a ball for me now. And if I do, I know I've just taught him. Yeah. Okay, if you want to play, just as how you show me. And you know what? Sometimes I don't care and I do do it. But at least I have a way to tell my dog, not now. And then he realizes, okay, cool. Now is not the right time. And so I, f- I find that balance with him. Yeah. And I think that's that adaptability <coughs> thing again, like you should be able to say no to your dog, but then other times you should be allowed to do it, let them do it. Obviously there's things like that do need to stay black and white with like some rules and boundaries, but some things can just be, that's it. it can be, oh, sometimes they stay, sometimes not. And one of the reasons I don't have lots of access to toys to my dogs is because my dog would resource guard yeah, some toys. Whereas the true toys are not a high enriching one for her. Like mm. it's fine if my other dog has them. But I can tell you if I left lots of stuffed titties out or something. I mean, they would all be shredded anyway. So, so they would have no, they would have <laughs> no, would they'd have no value. But also my dog doesn't like tennis balls and stuff and that kind of stuff. She actually finds only value in it when I'm interacting with her. So there's no, but I also kept it that way because mm. I like put them away. But it's also because she was a dog that struggled to give me attention. So I saved those things for you for, for the moments like when we went out to ignore things, play with me instead. So it depends on the dog you have as well. You have dogs that want to work for you all the time. Mm. So you, you can kind of give them a little bit more other things yeah. because, you know, like they'll work for you nonstop. But then for a dog that I have, I've had to make my time valuable. Otherwise, she doesn't see it as valuable. That's it. And yeah, I like that a lot. you using the resources to tell her if you want them it'll come with me yeah I'm part of the package yeah and so <laughs> she she loves it if i just threw it and left it she'd be like oh no it's boring now mm. she gets excited when i'm holding the toy because she's it. like this is actually way more fun mm. and so now because i've kind of done the dating thing where i've made myself a little bit hard to get sometimes when we are playing it's so much more valuable for her mm. and it means that she can go out more to different areas because she finds more value value in me than anything else. Yeah, I love that. That's great. Mm. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, so play more hard to get with your dog, I think, is the like don't give in to your dog wanting something. I think that's the main message. Yeah. Like sometimes yes, but if it doesn't suit you or if your dog doesn't have a stop I, I remember this labradoodle that I worked with and he would even go in the middle of the night. And I was like, first of all, why is this dog not in a crate? And stop giving in to this dog. Like, the dog should not want to play at like 11. Right, it's like, night. fuck you and your ball. I'm not playing at 11. And, the, and these people were already out with the ball like four times a day. I'm like, stop giving in to your dog. I think that's going to be my main message yeah. for this podcast. That's mine. If your dog is an attention seeker, then stop giving in to them. Yeah. And the other thing is if your dog 
isn't that fussed on your attention when they're out about. Maybe make yourself a little bit harder to get. True. Which usually comes with too much talking. Exactly. If, you're too, 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 if you talk too much to your dog in the house, or you freely give a lot of food out as mm. well, or treats or pets, then you probably have to cut down. Oh, and if you have a whiner and you can't stand listening to the whining, stop giving them attention when they whine. Put some noise cancelling headphones on so you can't hear them whine. Yeah. And that's how you can start ignoring them because they know this mm, mm, that noise grates on your nerves so you're gonna give in to it so put some noise cancelling headphones on put some music on or audiobook and you forget that your dog is even there i actually like that idea i hadn't thought of that before oh, that all the time and yeah. i think also an important part of that is they know it grates on you so they'll do it for a long time at the beginning exactly. so you do actually need some kind of cancelling because it will probably go on for at least an hour probably the that's whinging it. that's it and it'll go on for a long time especially for depending on how long this has been going on for mm. so that's got a good it, little like, tip it'll start a little, little yeah bark Oh, if I can't hear it, it doesn't It's not much. happening. Yeah, so exactly. look at them. And again, and another thing I wanted to add is if you think that by telling your dog no is going to stop them, that's still a tension. Oh, yeah. Please don't go like, stop, quiet, quiet, no. no. Like, it's not going to, it's not going to change. They, it's attention to them regardless of whether it's positive or negative. So put the headphones on and just don't acknowledge them. Exactly. All right, I hope this podcast was handy for you. If you have an attention-seeking dog, let us know in the comments what you think. If you're using any of these tips or you've fallen into any of these pits. Um, maybe yeah. flick us a question about how we would maybe approach it or something as a little tip. And we might be able to help in another podcast, maybe yeah, mention well, some little problems that people are having. We can have a, a quick chat about a problem for well, people. That, that, yeah, that would be cool to answer people's questions. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you can do that. Yeah. All right, thanks, guys. Bye.